Hello dear students, welcome to massive open online course on Swayam in business studies. I am Madhu Vaswani. Today under the topic of directing, we will take up the Maslow's need hierarchy theory of motivation and various financial and non-financial incentives to motivate the employees. Dear students, motivation refers to that process which excites people to work for attainment of the desired objectives. Since motivation is highly complex, many researchers have studied about motivation from several dimensions and developed some theories. These theories help to develop understanding about motivation phenomena. Among these, Maslow's need hierarchy theory is considered fundamental to understanding of motivation. Let us examine it in detail. Abraham Maslow a well-known psychologist in a classic paper published in 1943 outlined the elements of an overall theory of motivation. His theory was based on human needs. He felt that within every human being there exists a hierarchy of five needs. Maslow used the terms physiological, safety, belonging, esteem and self-actualization to describe the pattern that human motivations generally move through. First of all, basic physiological needs. These needs are most basic in the hierarchy and corresponds to primary needs. Physiological needs are the physical requirements for human survival. If these requirements are not met, the human body cannot function properly and will ultimately fail. Physiological needs are thought to be the most important. They should be met first. Hunger, thirst, shelter and sleep are some examples of these needs. In the organizational context, basic salary helps to satisfy these needs. Air, water and food are metabolic requirements for survival in all animals including humans. Second is safety security needs. These needs provide security and protection from physical and emotional harm. Examples are job security, stability of income, pension plans, etc. Once a person's physiological needs are relatively satisfied, their safety needs take precedence and dominate behavior. In the absence of physical safety due to war, natural disaster, family violence, child abuse, etc., people may experience post-traumatic stress disorder. In the absence of economic safety, due to economic crisis and lack of work opportunities, these safety needs manifest themselves in ways such as preference for job security, etc. Safety and security needs include personal security, health and well-being, financial security safety against accidents, illness and their adverse impacts. Third is affiliation or belonging needs. After physiological and safety needs are fulfilled, the third level of human needs is interpersonal and involves feelings of belongingness. These needs refer to affection, sense of belongingness, acceptance and friendship. Deficiencies within this level of Maslow's hierarchy due to neglect, shunning, racism, etc. can adversely affect the individual's ability to form and maintain emotionally significant relationships in general such as friendships, family. According to Maslow, humans need to feel a sense of belonging and acceptance among their social groups regardless whether these groups are large or small. For example, some large social groups may include clubs, co-workers, religious groups, professional organizations, sports team and gangs. Some examples of small social connections include family members, mentors, colleagues and confidants. Humans need to love and be loved by others. Many people become susceptible to loneliness, 
social anxiety and clinical depression in the absence of this love or belonging element. Next comes esteem needs. All humans have a need to feel respected. This includes the need to have self esteem and self respect. These include factors such as self respect, autonomy status, recognition and attention. Esteem presents the typical human desire to be accepted and valued by others. People often engage in a profession or hobby to gain recognition. These activities give the person a sense of contribution or value. Low self-esteem or an inferiority complex may result from imbalances during this level in the hierarchy. People with low self-esteem often need respect from others. They may feel the need to seek fame or glory. Psychological imbalances such as depression can hinder the person from obtaining a higher level of self-esteem or self-respect. Most people have a need for stable self-respect and self-esteem. Maslow noted two versions of esteem needs a lower version and a higher version. The lower version of esteem is the need for respect from others. This may include a need for status, recognition, fame, prestige and attention. The higher version manifests itself as the need for self-respect. For example, the person may have a need for strength, competence, mastery, self-confidence, independence and freedom. Deprivation of these needs may lead to an inferiority complex, weakness and helplessness. Fifth is self-actualization needs. It is the highest level of need in the hierarchy. It refers to the drive to become what one is capable of becoming. These needs include growth, self-fulfillment and achievement of goals. Self-actualization is a term that has been used in various psychological theories. Expressing one's creativity, quest for spiritual enlightenment, pursuit of knowledge and the desire to give and positively transform society are examples of self-actualization. The concept was brought most fully to prominence in Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory as the final level of psychological development that can be achieved when all basic and mental needs are essentially fulfilled and the actualization of the full personal potential takes place. Self-actualization can be seen as similar to words and concepts such as self-discovery, self-reflection, self-realization, and self-exploration. As Abraham Maslow noted, the basic needs of humans must be met. For example, food, shelter, warmth, security, sense of belonging. Before a person can achieve self-actualization, the need to be good, to be fully alive, and to find meaning in life. Yet, Maslow argued that reaching a state of true self-actualization in everyday society was fairly rare. For example, someone who has inherent potential to be a great artist or teacher may never realize his or her talents if their energy is focused on attaining the basic needs of humans. Maslow has made some assumptions in hierarchy of needs theory. These are as follows. First, people's behavior is based on their needs. Satisfaction of such needs influence their behavior. Man is a wanting being, that is, his wants are growing continuously even when some wants are satisfied. Human needs are of varied and diversified nature. They can be arranged in a hierarchy of importance, progressing from a lower to a higher order of needs. Second, People's needs are in hierarchical order, starting from basic needs to other higher level needs. 
needs have a definite hierarchy of importance as soon as needs on a lower level are fulfilled those on the next level will emerge and demand satisfaction third a satisfied need can no longer motivate a person only next higher level need can motivate him attention to all human needs is essential for motivation of employees attention to the provision of bread alone is not adequate for motivating employees bread can act as motivating factor when there is no bread but when it is available its use as motivator comes to an end here other motivators for example security of job social status etc will have to be introduced for motivating employees attention to other needs such as security needs social needs esteem needs and self actualization needs is equally important and essential for the motivation of different categories of employees maslow in his theory has referred to different needs and suggested that attention needs to be given to all such needs as attention to physiological needs alone is not adequate for motivating employees fourth assumption is a person moves to the next higher level of the hierarchy only when the lower need is satisfied according to maslow man does not live by bread alone this conclusion of maslow is a practical reality and needs to be given adequate attention while motivating employees maslow's theory focuses on the needs as the basis for motivation this theory is widely recognized and appreciated and provides guidelines to managers and managements for motivating employees however some of his propositions are questioned on his classification of needs and hierarchy of needs there are some of the limitations of maslow's hierarchy of needs theory which are number 1 maslow's theory is based on human needs only there is lack of direct cause and effect relationship between need and behavior second is the theory has to refer to other motivating factors like experience perception and expectation third needs of all employees are not uniform many are satisfied only with physiological needs and security of employment fourth limitation is the pattern of hierarchy of needs as suggested by maslow may not be applicable uniformly to all categories of employees fifth limitation maslow's assumption of need hierarchy theory does not hold good in the present age as each person has plenty of needs to be satisfied which may not necessarily follow maslow's need hierarchy now let's discuss the importance of hierarchy of needs theory although maslow's hierarchy of needs theory has been criticized on above grounds still it holds many advantages or merits despite such criticism the theory is still relevant because needs no matter how they are classified are important to understand the behavior it helps managers to realize that need level of employees which should be identified to provide motivation to them it helps the managers to understand the behavior of their employees it also helps the managers to provide the right financial or non financial motivation to their employees this overall helps to increase the efficiency productivity and profitability of the organization now let's discuss the various financial and non financial incentives which help to keep an employee motivated incentives means all measures which are used to motivate people to improve performance these incentives may be broadly classified as financial and non financial let us learn about these incentives in detail first of all financial incentives in the context of existing economic system money has become a means to satisfy the physical needs of daily life and also of obtaining 
social position and power. Money is an important motivator. Since money has a purchasing power, it becomes a very important incentive for every individual. Money plays a significant role in satisfying physiological and security or social needs. As money is recognized as a basis of status, respect and power, it also helps to satisfy the social needs of the people. It is important to mention that once the physiological and security needs are satisfied, money ceases to be a motivator. Financial incentives refer to incentives which are in direct monetary form or measurable in monetary term and serve to motivate people for better performance. These incentives may be provided on individual or group basis. The financial incentives generally used in organizations are listed below. First, pay and allowances. For every employee, salary is a basic monetary incentive. It includes basic pay, dearness allowance and traveling allowance, pay increments, other allowances, etc. Salary system consists of regular increments in the pay every year and enhancement of allowances from time to time. In some business organizations, pay hike and increments may be linked to performance. Good pay and allowances help the organization to retain and attract capable persons. However, good pay and allowances need not motivate all the people, especially who are enjoying security of job in government organizations and those for whom corruption is a way of life. Second, productivity linked wage incentives. Several wage incentive plans aims at linking payment of wages to increase in productivity at individual or group level. Next is bonus. Bonus is an incentive offered over and above the wages or salary to an employee. Fourth is profit sharing. Profit sharing is meant to provide a share to employees in the profits of the organization. This serves to motivate the employees to improve their performance and contribute to increase in profits. Fifth financial incentive is co-partnership or stock option. Under these incentive schemes, employees are offered company shares at a set price, which is lower than market price. Employees are given the right to purchase company stock at a fixed price, which is usually below market value over a certain amount of time. Sometimes management may allot shares in line of various incentives payable in cash. The allotment of shares create a feeling of ownership to the employees and makes them to contribute for the growth of the organization. Stock options encourage staff members to operate more as business partners, tying personal reward to the company's financial success. Many companies use employee stock options plans to compensate, retain and attract employees. In Infosys, the scheme of stock option has been implemented as a part of managerial compensation. Employees who are granted stock options hope to profit by exercising their option at a higher price. In India, Stock options have primarily been used as a retention tool for a more selective group of employees. Next is retirement benefits. Several retirement benefits such as provident fund, pension, leave encashment and gratuity provide financial security to employees after their retirement. This acts as an incentive when they are in service in the organization. These benefits provide assurance to employees during the service for their future. Seventh financial incentive is perquisites. In many companies, perquisites and fringe benefits are offered such as car allowance, housing, medical aid and education to the children etc. over and above the salary. These measures help to provide motivation to the employees or managers. Now, non-financial incentives. 
all the needs of individuals are not satisfied by money alone man is a wanting animal once money satisfies his or her physiological and security needs it ceases to be a motivating force then higher order needs for status and recognition and ego in the society emerge psychological social and emotional factors also play important role in providing motivation non financial incentives mainly focus on these needs sometimes monetary aspect may be involved in non financial incentives as well however the emphasis is to provide psychological and emotional satisfaction rather than money driven satisfaction for example if an individual gets promotion in the organization it satisfies him psychologically more as he gets a feeling of elevation increases in status increases in authority challenges in the job etc though promotion involves payment of extra money non monetary aspects override monetary aspects some of the important non financial incentives are discussed below number 1 status in the organizational context status means ranking of positions in the organization the authority responsibility rewards recognition perquisites and prestige of job indicate the status given to a person holding a managerial position psychological social and esteem needs of an individual are satisfied by status given to their job number 2 is organizational climate organizational climate indicates the characteristics which describe an organization and distinguish one organization from the other these characteristics influence the behavior of individuals in the organization some of these characteristics are individual autonomy reward orientation consideration to employees risk taking etc if managers take positive measures regarding these aspects it helps to develop better organizational climate next is career advancement opportunity every individual wants to grow to the higher level in the organization managers should provide opportunity to employees to improve their skills and be promoted to the higher level jobs appropriate skills development programs and sound promotion policy will help employees to achieve promotions promotion works as a tonic and encourages employees to exhibit improved performance number 4 is job enrichment job enrichment is concerned with designing jobs that include greater variety of work content require higher level of knowledge and skill give workers more autonomy and responsibility and provide the opportunity for personal growth and a meaningful work experience job enrichment simply means adding the contents to a job leading to increased responsibility scope and challenge in its performance particularly the executives working at the higher levels often prefer to job enrichment because it makes job more challenging they derive higher satisfaction by performing more and more challenging jobs thus job enrichment as an incentive motivates the executives to exert for accomplishment of their goals if jobs are enriched and made interesting the job itself becomes a source of motivation to the individual next is employee recognition programs most people have a need for evaluation of their work and due recognition they feel that what they do should be recognized by others concerned recognition means acknowledgement with a show of appreciation when such appreciation is given to the work performed by employees they feel motivated to perform or work at higher level some examples of employee recognition are congratulating the employee for good performance 
displaying on the notice board or in the company newsletter about the achievement of employee installing award or certificate for best performance distributing mementos complimentaries like t-shirts in recognition of employee services rewarding an employee for giving valuable suggestions sixth non financial incentive is job security employees want their job to be secured they want certain stability about future income and work so that they do not feel worried on these aspects and work with greater zeal in india this aspect is more important considering the inadequate job opportunities and too many aspirants for these nothing can motivate a worker appointed temporarily better than provision of job security even if a temporary worker puts in a greater efforts lack of job security will always pose a threat if such a worker is given job security he will be more committed to the organization however there is one negative aspect of job security when people feel that they are not likely to lose their jobs they may become complacent next is employee participation it means involving employees in decision making of the issues related to them inviting workers to participate in management gives workers a psychological satisfaction that their voices are also heard this imbibes a sense of importance among the workers in many companies these programs are in practice in the form of joint management committees work committees canteen committees etc eighth non financial incentive is employee empowerment empowerment means giving more autonomy and powers to subordinates empowerment makes people feel that their jobs are important this feeling contributes positively to the use of skills and talents in the job performance now Let's summarize what all we discussed in this module. Maslow's need hierarchy theory of motivation. Since motivation is highly complex, many researchers have studied about motivation from several dimensions and developed some theories. These theories help to understand about motivation phenomena. Maslow's need hierarchy theory is considered fundamental to understanding of motivation. His theory was based on human needs. He felt that within every human being there exists a hierarchy of five needs. Number 1, basic physiological needs. Number 2, safety and security needs. 3, affiliation or belonging needs. Number 4, esteem needs and the last self actualization needs. Maslow's assumptions in hierarchy of needs theory are number 1, people's behavior is based on their needs next people's needs are in hierarchical order and the third a satisfied need can no longer motivate a person and the fourth a person moves to the next higher level of hierarchy only when the lower need is satisfied we discussed about some financial incentives which are pay and allowances productivity linked wage incentives bonus profit sharing co partnership or uh, stock option retirement benefits perquisites then we discussed non financial incentives such as status organizational climate career advancement opportunity job enrichment employee recognition programs job security employee participation and employee empowerment in the next module we will discuss about the next important element of directing which is leadership we will study meaning features importance and various styles of leadership thank you